three questions I'm going to be answering in this video. Hopefully by the time you've finished watching this then um, you'll be your mind will be put at ease and you'll be ready to get started um, in your dropshipping business because trust me the best way to become good at running a business is by actually running a business not by watching YouTube videos. Before we get started though one big favor to ask and that is if you enjoyed this video so if I answer any of these questions adequately for you uh, please do me the favor of hitting that like button. If you have any comments questions video suggestions um, make sure you post them down below too. I read every single comment and then third and finally only 50% of people who watch these videos are actually subscribed so if you haven't subscribed yet and um, please make sure you hit that subscribe button now and that being said then let's jump straight into question number one so the first topic I want to address in this video is customs duty and VAT so these are two potential charges two potential costs that you will come across as you're dropshipping so outside of the EU into the UK you have customs duty and you have VAT two completely separate things and these are to be confused with the VAT if you're a VAT registered business where you pay 20% on all sales. They're not to be confused with corporation tax, which is what you pay on your profits if you're a business. And they're not to be confused with income taxes as well. These are the taxes on the goods that you're bringing in. And that's it, just two separate things. Number one is customs duty. So this is charged on all gifts and goods if they're sent from outside the EU. So if you're dropshipping from China, then customs duty will come into play and they have to be above a certain value. Anything under 135 pounds, there will be no charge and you won't have to worry about paying customs duty. The second potential cost you have to worry about is VAT, which is currently charged at 20% of the total value of the goods. And this is charged on goods sent from outside the EU, so i.e. China into the UK. And you don't have to pay VAT if the cost of those goods are under 15 pounds total. As it says there, under 15 pounds total equals no charge. If your goods are more than that, then you have to pay VAT on what the total value is. The next point you have to consider as well is these values, so the £15 total, the £135 total, this includes the postage cost. So if you buy an item off AliExpress that costs £14.99, as long as there's no delivery cost, you'll be absolutely fine. But if you have to pay e-packet on top of that, and that takes it over the £15 total, then there will be a VAT charge um, to pay. The next important note to keep in mind is that this is on the total value of the goods that we pay for. So if what we pay on AliExpress. If you're selling, if you're buying an item for £10 total and selling it for £50, it's only based on what we pay on AliExpress. It's not based on what we sell it for. The next thing I want to kind of clarify as well is that the source of this information is as of March 2020. So if you're watching this one, two, three years later, it may have changed. The best thing to do to get the latest up-to-date information is to go to this link here. So this is from the official doc uk website so as i'm recording this now then in march 2020 then all of this is so far accurate the next question to answer then is should i set up a company so should i go limited should i go sole trader basically there's three different ways you can do it so when you start a business you can set up as a sole trader you can set up as a limited company or you can go as a partnership now it's really difficult to kind of give a blanket answer to this because it depends on so many different factors. It depends on whether you have a job and how much money you earn from that. It depends on whether you own a house, do you have a family. Ultimately the best advice I can give you is to speak to a financial professional, um, i.e. an accountant, and they will ask you probably half a dozen different questions and depending on what your answers are to those questions, um, the ones I've just mentioned, they will then advise you what the best thing to do. However, most of the people I speak to then are, tend to be quite young students who aren't earning any money. So for most people, I'm guessing that they would want to register as a sole trader first. And you have to do this then. So the point in which you have to tell HMRC that you're running a business and you're earning money is when you earn more than £1,000 in a tax year. Now, just to take you through the kind of argument of sole trader versus limited company, because there's no doubt some people will ask me, what's the difference? Why would you do one over the other? Um, I've bullet pointed the three kind of main advantages, or at least they're the main advantages in my mind. Um, in terms of a sole trader versus limited company, when it comes to actually running your business, i.e. accounting, then it's a lot cheaper to do so because as a sole trader, you can register for self-assessment and you can file your own accounts. As a limited company, to my knowledge, you have to pay a registered accountant, a chartered accountant, to file your um, account on a yearly basis, which, depending on who you go with, usually somewhere between kind of 500 um, and 1,000 pounds. Point number two is that limited companies offer be better tax relief 
when you hit a certain amount of profit. So when you're running as a sole trader, any profit you make would be classed as income tax. Um, income tax typically is higher. When you get to a higher amount, income tax is typically higher, I can't talk right now, um, than corporation taxes. So depending on how much you're earning, sometimes it's financially beneficial to register um, as a limited company. The third one and the biggest advantage for me at least because I own multiple different properties is that limited companies give you better protection. So the potential debts from your dropshipping business are separate from your personal finances. So for example then because I own multiple properties, if one of my dropshipping business because they're as because they're all registered as a limited company, if somebody was to sue me and I'd come liable to pay them um, let's say 300 grand and I don't have that money in the bank, then if it wasn't a limited company and I was a sole trader, I could be forced to sell those properties that I own in order to foot the bill but when you register as a limited company um, the company becomes a completely separate financial entity to you and yourself so if you have a family for example and you live in a house and you have a mortgage on that house um, the advantage of having a limited company is that if your dropshipping does become liable to pay some money then your house that you and your family live in is completely safe um, and not at risk and again this information is from the .gov website and it's correct to my knowledge um, as of March 2020. The third and final question then, probably the most important or the biggest question or most popular question, sorry, that you'll see going around the different Facebook groups um, is e-packet delivery times. Do customers really wait that 20 to 40 days that you see AliExpress quote in? Um, and right, a couple of points now. So number one is very, 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 very rarely does it take longer than that 20 days. Here is a graph, as you can see, as an experiment of all different e-packets um, that were sent on different dates back in 2018. Um, and these are the number of packages. So you can see typically over sometimes 10,000 orders per day. Um, and this was kind of like tracked on how quickly they were delivered. So what we can see is that within day 14, so within two weeks, on average, over 62% of those packages would arrive and then typically by the end of day 16 over 80 percent of that so what you're talking about here is that within day 11 day 12 one in five um, e-packet packages are going to arrive to your customer and this is to the UK as well now the reason AliExpress supplies and quote that 20 to 40 days or sometimes you'll see 20 to 35 days is because if an item e-packet is tracked so if an item isn't delivered within that timeline within that um, date range that they give so within 35 days within 40 days then you as a buyer can claim your money back whereas if it arrives quicker then obviously you can't because that's a good thing but if it goes over that then you can claim your money back so most suppliers tend to give that kind of extended delivery time just in case whatever happens they need an extra week to process things so for example if it's Chinese holidays um, or if your item gets held up in customs which can sometimes happen on a rare basis um, then again it just gives them that breathing space and that's typically why they'll put 20 to 35 days or 20 to 45 days what you have to realize as well is that most of the supplies on AliExpress aren't accommodating for the dropshipping market most of them are accommodating for end users so they don't mind quoting that little bit extra because they're the end users they know it's coming from China so they would expect it to take a long time anyway um, the next thing you can do then that I want to finish the video on that not many people know you can do is if you're still unsure and you still want to try and source your products a bit quicker then there are um, there is something that you can actually do on AliExpress which I'm going to show you now. So from your AliExpress dropshipping center then if you already have a product that you really want to dropship you've already found it say um, you've got your supply lined up and then just on the off chance you want to see if you can source it a bit faster which I recommend everybody do by the way. Come into your dropshipping center put in so let's say you're dropshipping dog collars you can search for dog collars. Um, if it loads and then what you can also do is just change this to the country that you're dropshipping to so I want to dropship to the UK I always do in the beginning and then I want to try and find some countries that are a bit closer to the UK because then delivery is going to be a bit quicker so for example I know that Spain have some really fast delivery time sometimes um, so essentially what it's done now is it's given me all the products I can source and dropship from Spain um, into the UK and that's also going to change up um, the import duties and VAT as well so if I just choose this product as an example then just to show you how quickly you can actually source things um, because this is quite a big supply they have many countries in which you can source this from Poland I've never actually seen Poland before but as we can see estimated delivery to the UK is 5 to 20 days and that's 352 we have France cannot deliver to the UK and then we have Spain um, so again free shipping to the UK from Spain uh, is estimated delivery on March 12 so that's about a week nine days um, so as you can see if you do already have a product then that you are wanting to drop ship it's always worth coming to your drop shipping center um, just to see if you can source it that bit quicker. And with that being said then guys, I think that pretty much just wraps up the video. 